Um, I'm just going to start. So uh, our team is the Omega Otters, and this is our project called the News Nebula AI. Next slide. Um, so for an overview of what we're going to talk about in our presentation, first a brief about our team, a summary of our project, uh, the data set we used, and the tools we used to create our model, the pre-processing and training processes, um, the rogue score and model that we got with our results, and the obstacles we encountered and the future steps we might take with the project. Next slide. So uh, we're all going to briefly introduce ourselves. Hi, my name is Zara and I worked on the AI training in the back end portion of the project. I'm from California and I'm a rising junior. And as for my hobbies, I like to read, travel and hang out with family and friends. Hello, my name is Isaac. I'm a rising sophomore in California. My hobbies are swimming, camping, and reading, and I worked on the back end part of this uh, project. I mean, pre-process, sorry. Hi, my name is Zia. I'm entering ninth grade soon, and I live in California. I like to swim, code, and play video games, and I worked on the AI training portion of this project. Hello, everyone. My name is Priyansh, and I was the instructor of this group. And my simple motto is that do or do not, there is no try. Hello, my name is Ethan. Um, I'm going to be a senior in high school this year, and I was working on the pre-processing along with Isaac. Uh, hi, my name is Ava. Sorry for the technical troubles. I'm an eighth grade. I'll be an eighth grader this fall, and my hobbies include competitive swimming and coding. And I worked on the website design. So I'll be going over a summary of our project. Uh, next slide. So our project called News Nebula is supposed to take the user's inputted article, they just paste in an article that they want, and it uses the first 500 words of that input to create a summary as an output. And our goal with this project was to allow people to um, just to kind of support um, understanding the news and being able to understand it more efficiently. And it was also inspired by ChatGPT and how it functions. Um, and now Zara will be going over the data set and tech stack. So we got our data set from Kaggle, which included thousands of HuffPost articles, but we trained our AI model on 500 selected files to teach it how to summarize accurately. For our front end development, we used HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And for back end, we used Flask, Python, and Google Colab. Next, pre-processing will be talked about by Zia. Thank you. Um, for our downloading data, we used the the data set off Kaggle, and we download the content of the articles from the links, and we use the Pegasus tokenizer to split up our data for the AI. We also remove stop words like the, a, and is, so that the AI could better understand, and we also use stemming and lemonization to bring words to their basic forms, and our training to testing ratio is 80 to 20. Um, the next set will be presented by Isaac about the rogue score in the model. So for our rogue score model, we first had to choose what model we would be using. Out of all these models, we selected Google Pegasus CNN because it had one of the highest rogue scores overall. And also we had a bunch of experience using the Pegasus tokenizer. Uh, once we had that, we went to train different types of our model. Here are two different versions of what we used. The one on the right was one of our earlier models and the one on the left was our final. And in the end, we got a training rogue score of 66.62% and a testing rogue score of 66.32%, which was very accurate. Now on to Ava for obstacles and future steps. So some of the obstacles that we faced was long training time because of the numbers of the number of files that we trained it, the model on. We also had some implementation errors between training the model in Google Colab versus implementing the model to the website. There were, were a couple of website errors, such as CSS scripting and HTML and G JavaScript errors. We also had some memory issues running out of RAM and GPU. We also had to change the website design from the initial template a bit, changing the color theme, background, layout, et cetera. We also had to think about some fun additions to make our website more unique. For future extensions, 
we were thinking that the model could write an article based on a headline that the user inputs or generate a headline from a given article, or it could generate both based on a short blurb that the user gives. Um, now, we'll be, now we will be showing our website. So our website includes a homepage um, and about us section, as well as a credit section. And now we will demonstrate our AI model. So in the video, a New York Times article is inputted. And then after cl clicking the submit button, there's an output, but it also shows what was originally inputted. This page also calculates the rogue score for the user to see how accurate their summarization was. And Ethan will be going over what would happen if there was a potential error in this model. So in the next video, um, we'll be seeing what happens as the user inputs something as per usual, but it might encounter an error, whether due to possibly like the model still loading or something along those lines. And it will return a message like that, just prompting the user to try again. And that's it for our presentation. Thank you for listening.